Okay, these first couple of clips are going to be from uh, a previous video I just did. Um, and you'll find that this mirroring, uh, this magnification, um, does obscure our vision. Um, I also think that this is what uh, causes this ramping up effect. Um, also, what I did was I slowed this down so you could watch how these waves do block out the lower halves of these giant Florida pelicans. These are giant Florida pelicans, folks. Um, you won't see anything like it unless you come to Florida and check them out, man. They're huge. Um, <laughs> uh, but obviously, you can tell that uh, waves do obscure our vision, too, to the lower portions of boats. So you imagine uh, the boat, the smaller it gets, the harder it is to uh, resolve the angular resolution to the edge of the bottom of the boat. Um, this ramping up effect also causes things to vanish bottom up. In most cases, also, this magnification causes things to vanish bottom up. Um, these are two things. Um, also, right here, I uh, added in um, the boat that was in that footage going behind the rack because I do want to show um, that on a normal day with good visibility not only are the boats much much smaller um, but um, you know it, the farther back you go it magnifies as the object now this is where I had my tripod on this particular day and this was taken in November the 22nd 2019 on a very very clear day matter of fact it was, um, this was such an awesome day of visibility I stayed out there for four hours filming um, you know from all the way from the south all the way to the north um, was able to get um, the land beyond the islands that I I filmed north of me including the um, the power plant. Um, I also was able to get the power plant um, to the south of me too with the infrared camera that uh, maybe I'll show on another video. Um, but this is the footage that I've got of uh, the Bayport rack. Now, uh, yes, there is some distortion going on. People say, oh, you know, you don't know how to focus your camera. Well, believe me, I've tried to focus as much as I possibly can on these things. And uh, when there's distortion, you just you just cannot, you can't focus on it. Um, distortion is one thing that uh, optically you you just cannot um, manually focus, auto focus. It it just does not happen. But I am at full zoom. And in the original video, I even say to myself, I, I need to compare this to some uh, of my other footage with the P1000 um, because this is what I'm using is a P1000. And, it, and it's really very telling to me. Also, um, look where the, the visible water line is. It's well beyond. And all of that that's well beyond usually gets obscured in the uh, illumination of the sky when it gets so illuminated it is uh, bust or breaking down our visibility distance right we have a visibility limit um, so when that limit gets blocked off you see a false uh, horizon line which would be a false visible water line um, and then everything beyond it is uh, mirrored and it just mirroring the sky beyond it um, so that's why you get these effects where some days, I, you know, when I first got into this, I wondered why sometimes I would have boats riding on the same visible waterline for a long, long time. And you'd never see them go really over the curve. they just ride on that same waterline. Well, on this particular day, um, they weren't riding on the same waterline. They were literally riding on the water that was visible. And this is the difference between visibility, uh, you know, having good visibility and having bad visibility. And I even think that there is some uh, magnification even going on in this because uh, I've, I've filmed this before and um, 
I had a lot of distortion, but the rack looked smaller. Um, so I'm not going to bring up that, but I am going to bring up uh, right here shortly uh, one other rack that I, I film. Um, Bayport entrance rack is the closest rack to me, and the farthest rack is uh, Cutter's Rock which is uh, approximately 11.22 uh, miles. Actually, on my navigation map, uh, Cutter's Rock is at 11.75 miles if I measure it out on that. The only problem is, is that the map is just, you know, it's so small, you, you're not really sure exactly where my standing point is. Um, the, ro uh, the rack itself is marked, but I'm not sure exactly where some of the other stuff is. Now, I'm going to let some uh, natural audio go on here shortly. That's what I should see right there. Because I'm not getting so much magnification as I am compression. And it's also hidden in that um, light and the distortion. Let's see if we can't find that a little bit later. I'll find the north rack. Let me go back to the rack and get my phone out here and record this. The tide's coming back in on me here. Oh, where were you? There you go. I do uh, to the water uh, coming in, tide getting higher. Um, I had to move my camera out from in front of that bush that most people, um, you know, see in my videos sometimes. As a matter of fact, I did a video where I was zoomed through that bush uh, with a boat well beyond it. Uh, but anyhow, I, I had to move the camera because I was uh, wind up standing in mud. And uh, this is really some nasty mud underneath your feet when you when you get into it. But I just wanted to show that my camera was up at five feet here um, during this part of the Cutter's Rocks uh, observation. Later on, I do go in and uh, get a lower perspective of it, and I will show that. But I also had to increase my um, ISO all the way up as high as I could go in order to actually get a good visibility on it. This before him. Reflection off the water here. Everything is down there is a reflection. Look at here. Here is Cutter's Rock. And this is about the size that I think it should be, but it shouldn't be so distorted and, and compressed. But there's Cutter's Rock. Let me show you where my camera's located. <laughs> In my tripod, it's five feet. Okay, so I do have a five feet, but that's what I should see the size of it as far as size wise, for, uh, perspectively, from 11.05 miles out. Look at that, and water beyond it. That is awesome. I'm doing something I don't normally like to do, I don't normally like to uh, cut. Uh, a lot of my stuff and edit it, but I am going to cut and edit some of this because what I want to do is uh, skip over to um, later in the evening um, when it does start getting a little darker. Like I said, I had to um, also uh, increase my ISO on here. Um, again, here, look at, look at this boat that's even way further past there. Um, you know, and Glovers want to say that this is uh, being, you know, all these uh, humps and bumps and big, huge bulge is uh, disappearing and allowing me to see some of these boats. Um, I personally don't believe that that's the case. After all the observations I've done, um, you know, and seeing the difference between a day of good visibility and a day of bad visibility as far as... Um, you know, weather conditions, 
um, hindering my optics. Um, now we had I had a boat similar to this in a, a previous video that went by the, the Billy Steele's rack. Uh, matter of fact, that almost looks like the same boat. But anyhow, um, that's for another video again. Um, I just want to um, get to this other part because this video is getting longer than what I wanted to. So let me skip over to that. Right. Uh, gotta get down here. You know that my camera's here. Water's right there. I mean, oh, 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 a few inches above. But uh, there's Cutter's Rock. You can see it flashing. And I'm at 28 inches. And you can still see that there's uh, <laughs> there's the light flashing on it. But that's definitely Cutter's Rock. I mean, I can only see so many racks from this position, but definitely got this one. Definitely got it. Alright, um, I, I want to talk through this little part here until I get the uh, uh, locate the Cutter's Rock rack. Um, this is the part that you've seen in the um, cell phone footage. Um, the only reason why I say this is because when there's mirroring, um, heavy mirroring, that mirroring is really, really close to you. Um, and then when there is, uh, you know, a lot better visibility, the mirroring still is occurring, but it's occurring way further out on that far edge. And in other words, that the mirroring effect is still occurring, um, and it is blocking us out from uh, the horizon still. It's actually mirroring the clouds above it. So there is some a portion out there that does have some mirroring effect going on. And I apologize for this, uh, you know, grainy footage, but this is what happens when you have a low light camera and you have to crank up, uh, you know, your ISO to pick up more light in order for you to see it a little bit longer. Uh, because eventually, even though you have your ISO turned all the way up, it just gets too dark and you just cannot see nothing. Um, and the same way with the infrared camera. Once it gets too dark, even with the low light setting on it, you're only going to be able to see for so long. But, you know, as you see, I'm skimming across here. You see the clouds in the background. Um, another thing I want to bring up is um, also sometimes um, the visibility is better north of me sometimes or uh, better south of me sometimes than it is the other direction but then I find sometimes it's just as good uh, directly west of me too um, in other words it really has a lot to do with that illumination um, how much cloud cover you got how much uh, the clouds filter out the light um, this is all playing a role in what obscures our visibility now I mean, obviously, on my cell phone footage, it even looked better than through the camera. Um, that's because when I'm looking at the viewfinder, I don't see as much of this grainy stuff. But as soon as I put it on my computer, you know, I have this grainy, grainy effect. But that right there is Cutter's Rock. Again, um, you know, I know I, there's a little discrepancy in the distance, um, you know, Originally, I thought it was 11.05 miles. Uh, Taboo Conspiracies uh, redid the coordinates on it. Came up with 11.22 miles. I measured it on my navigation maps and come up with 11.75 miles. So, um, let's just average it out and say 11 miles at 28 inches. I should not be seeing this at all. It would have to be well below the curvature of Earth. Uh, there should be a great big huge bulge in front of me that will of water that will be blocking this out but obviously there is none why because of visibility you know the song from the Beatles I can see for miles and miles and miles well that's what I'm seeing and they basically tell you the same thing you know I think a lot of these uh, people that uh, flew around the, the country, or flew over around this plane. Um, I think they've seen things in 
you know, discovered this themselves, but of course, you know, they'd be called crazy idiots if they came out and told pu the public that the world was flat. Um, but obviously, there's a lot more airplane pilots coming out um, saying, yes, we fly over a plane. They don't see curvature. Um, <laughs> so, again, um, we got some really, really good people coming out and actually being truthful about things. And that's what I like to see. All right, next, I like to put up a bunch of pictures um, and kind of talk them over as I go through them. Okay, this is uh, the Bayport entrance track. Obviously, you can see that light tracing all the way across. You can see some of the birds out there, some rocks out there. Um, but what don't you see? You don't see no big, huge hump of water. There's no bulging water. There's Cutter's Rock. Again, my camera's still at 28 inches. Um, it flashes out there, so, you know, of course, I'm not going to get it. I moved the camera a little bit. Um, again, you can see the dates, um, darkened, uh, or less, uh, exposure rate on it. Um, got nothing there. <laughs> and then here's the Crystal River power plant. Um, now I'm going to be truthful. I moved up to, um, the observation deck to take these pictures, but, um, you can even compare these two ones that I did at the 30 inches. On a prior video that I did, um, I took pictures at 30 inches and 4 inches um, and got just about the same um, quality of video or pictures. Um, seen just a pretty much basically the same. Actually, I think I seen uh, more of uh, more detail of it and with a little better focus. Um, it was getting uh, dark. Plus two being up on this observation deck, uh, you know, there was a few people came up there and walked around, uh, maybe shook my camera a little bit, got me out of focus. I ran a couple of these through some filters. As you can obviously see, I um, you know, tried to brighten up the screen and show how that light is still flashing all the way across the water to me. Um, that land that's out there is several miles away from me. Um, so you are, you know, the bottom edge of that is being cut off. And if you look at the, I think I did a video too on my map showing how far away and how much land that, um, is between me and this power plant. Again, the Globers will claim, uh, and I, and I don't like these as much because I didn't have as good of a focus on it. Um. But again, you know, you're looking at this tiny little screen. There's a full zoom picture. Um, I did full zoom on it. And I, and I also think that I was getting a little magnification on this too. Uh, because again, I think the other pictures at 30 inches, I had even better visibility and was getting um, actually uh, better quality photo on it. Um, Again, you know, there's a lot of things that go along with uh, taking photos and video that really does obscure our, vis our, our vision. Now, this too, I took, this is uh, the Hernando Beach condominiums from Pine Island. Um, I actually caught the tops of them sticking up above the, um, this little bit of land that sticks out over there. And you can also see that tower um, that also was in some of my pictures from the Hernando Beach Island observation that I did of them. All right, folks, I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.